In this tutorial, we create a dynamic tree. I learned this from Mr. Cheebs. I'm trying to learn something else at the moment, but um, this was required for me to understand what I need to do. Please don't forget to like and subscribe. Here is another example that we do at the end of this tutorial. Step number one, go to Edit, Preferences, Add-ons, and search, type in Sapling, and make sure you've got Add Curve Sapling Tree Gen enabled. Once you have that enabled, select your default cube, press X, Delete, Numpad 1 for Front Orthographic View, Shift A, Curve, and click on Sapling Tree Gen. Once you've done this, choose a Sapling Tree Gen that you wish to use, and uh, I'm going to use the Douglas fir because it's taller and it's also got one point which means it's easier to show for demonstration purposes and whenever I do this with a smaller tree it seems to be a little bit glitchy for whatever reason probably just me but uh, probably not <laughs> click branch splitting let's increase the branch splitting by one and then we go to the armature and I'm going to just disable briefly my screencast so I can see. And I'm going to use armature and use mesh. And I'm going to reduce this to one. There we go. And with that done, we have a beautiful tree. We can go to the modify properties and we can apply the skin modifier. And with that done, we can press tab, go into edit mode, press 3 to choose face select, select the face over here, press ctrl L for links, press ctrl I for inverse, and go to your object data properties, add a, click on the plus sign to add vertex group, make sure you're on group, click assign, and to see if it worked, you can click deselect, and you can click select. It works. Perfect. <clears throat> now we can go to object mode. One thing we don't need is the actual curve of here. So we can just press X and delete that. It's no longer needed. But we will create a new collection called tree. And we'll put all the tree stuff in the tree collection. We'll create one new collection and we'll call this collection leaves. We could use multiple leaves, but in this example we're only going to use one type. But before we even get to that, let's click on our tree. Let's make, click on this icon to hide the tree. And all we're left with is the armature or the bones of this tree. Select the bones, press tab, go into edit mode, and click the very top bone over here, and then press E, X, Make it as long as you like. Go to the bone properties, the relations, and remove the relationship from the other bones so it doesn't affect the tree directly. And remove deform as well. And so this almost acts as our handle to manipulate the tree in any way we like. Now, now that we've done that, select this bone, press tab, go into pose mode. With this bone selected, zoom in here, press shift and select this bone. And now you want to press Control shift c And you want to click on Inverse Kinematics. Once you've selected Inverse Kinematics, understand that it's not on this bone, but it's on this, this bone over here. That's where the relationship is. To do a quick test, we're going to select this bone, which is our handle bone, I guess. And we're going to press G. And we're going to bend it and bring it down to about here. And now we're going to select this bone over here and we're going to go to our bone constraint properties and this is where our IK is, which is our inverse kinematics and we're going to add to this chain length and we're going to decide how many bones will actually be part of what we will effect. And I want to make everything effect except for the very last bone. So I think that is it. There we go. Once you've done that, Press G 
and that should be fine. So it's still got a solid base. There we go. And we can bring the tree back. And there we go. Now, now we kind of done with the, the tree. The next thing to do is to add the leaves. Uh, but before we do, we have to click on the tree, press tab, go into object mode, select the tree mesh, go to the particle properties, add a new particle property, click on hair, and we can play with the size in a second. I'm just going to make this one for now, because we're going to adjust that a lot more. Currently, you can see it's all over the mesh. We have to limit it to that group we created earlier. So we're going to go to the vertex group, and we want all the density to be on press G on the group we created. And by doing that, it will only happen on those smaller branches, which would be far more appropriate, which is perfect. We also want to turn it. Let's scroll up. Hair, da, da, da. Turn on the hair dynamics. And with that selected, we can now click on the leaves um, collection, press shift A, and we can make use of a mesh, a plane, and we're just gonna hide the other collection, or the other collections even, press numpad seven, top orthographic view, tab, edit mode, one to choose vertex select, and right click, subdivide, select this vert, GY, and then we go G, instead of G we're going to press S and just bring it in a bit, do the same here, S, bring it in a bit, and then just go uh, G, Y, just bring it out just a bit like that. So we've got some sort of leaf shape. If you want, you can go the extra mile, press two, and select these two edges, and press G, Z, and just bring it down a bit. S to scale it in a bit. Or we can just leave it as is, G. And if you want to create even more shape here, yeah, uh, we can press 1, select the single point here, turn on proportional editing, and this is, and we're going to press G, scale this up, and we can try and create some interesting shape. There isn't a lot of vertices to play with here, so it's kind of hard. But, I mean, we can try. I don't know, something like that should do. And that's our basic leaf. Right, and then all we have to do is press tab, go into object mode, right click shade smooth, and there you have it. We have a nice, beautiful leaf. And uh, the only thing left to do now is to press shift, sorry, control A, and press all, bring back everything, numpad one, and rename the plane leaf and with the leaf selected we're going to go to the modify property well let's yeah, we're going to go to the modify properties actually let's yeah and then we're going to click particle instance and we're going to select the tree mesh we're going to increase the amount to one and we're going to click create a long path and we've got options here to choose X, Y, or Z axis to change how the leaves look. I'm going to leave it on the Z axis, but I'm going to click on this mesh and delete it. I'm going to press S to scale this to make it a lot smaller. Then once I've made it to an appropriate size, I'm going to press Control A, All, or you can just choose Scale, and I'm going to add the tree mesh back and see if it looks any better. All right, I'm quite happy with that. Next thing you want to do is select your leaf, go to your material properties, and let's quickly just add any old material. In this case, I'm going to add a yellowy green. Let's click on our material settings so we can see how it looks. And then let's select our tree, add a material, and we're going to make this orange and then bring it down to make it brown. And let's go to our material settings, 
our world settings. Let's make the whole background white. Let's press mesh plane. Let's put this plane in our main collection. And let's press S to scale this plane out. And what this plane does, it allows us to see shadows as well. And once you've got a size that you like, if you like, you can add a new material to it. Um, I don't know. Let's let's do let's use blue this time. And with blue selected, we can also go to our render settings quickly and just fix a few things here. Um, t -t 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 volumetrics, volumetric shadows. Screen space reflection, bloom, and ambient occlusion. And we need to select our light system, object data properties, change it to sun, make this 30, still too strong. Let's try 20, let's try 10, and change the color. Let's see what color would be appropriate. That looks pretty good. And then we just choose the angle that we want to capture the shot in. So possibly something like this. Press Control Alt Numpad Zero. Select your camera. Go to your object data properties of your camera and just increase the end clip to 2000 so it doesn't clip. And there you have it. Now the final thing you want to do is select this bone thingy. Press Tab. Go to Pose Mode. Press I, uh, look at it, location rotation scale is fine. And we can press G. And you can just choose a random angle that uh, looks interesting like that. Click and then change the time frame to 50, which is roughly two seconds and press I location rotation and scale let's press G again let's find another interesting angle click let's change to frame 100 oh made a mistake okay frame 100 and then we press G and we just bring it out And we press I, location, rotation, and scale. We switch to 150. And we press G. I'm actually going to go out of this view so I have to control numpad one of what I'm trying to do. So I'm going to press G. Also, I'm going to switch to this view so it moves a little bit faster, doesn't get bogged down by the render engine. Okay, let's zoom out here. Okay, we can also press R. There we go. Press I, location, rotation, and scale. And uh, you know what? I'm going to leave it at that. That should serve to be a good enough example change it to 150 frames and go over the render settings one last time to make sure i didn't miss anything let's also in include high quality normals see how it looks in render view through the camera lens 
and uh, the output currently is amount of time determined best compression is zero no compression with fast file output fastest compression with slow file output okay well let's do that right and all we need to do now is first render this out all the images then we can render out all the images into a video so i'm going to render this animation and i'll see you once i'm done but that's the end of this tutorial please don't forget to like and subscribe and i appreciate you guys uh, watching this and uh, yeah have a great day